Have you ever been looking through the RASA documentation or working on a project and run across the term featureizer and wondered what it meant? Today, we're going to talk about what featureizers are and how to use them in NLP for developers. Featureizer is a term that you'll mostly find in software packages designed to help with some sort of machine learning task. So a featureizer is a very general term for any piece of code that takes in raw input and then gives you the features that you need to feed into a machine learning model. And when I say feature here, I just mean a numerical representation that you can use as input to a machine learning model that you're using, particularly a deep learning model. Some common types of features include labels and tags. So labels and tags are basically the same thing. They're a, a short text description of something about a specific piece of data. Um, what gets called a label and what gets called a tag is just sort of based on precedent and norms. And the way that these are represented numerically usually is that you have a list of all your possible tags or labels and each one is uh, mapped to a specific number. So if you're looking at part of speech, you might have noun is one, verb is two, adjective is three, etc. Another type of numerical representation would be something like a word embedding, which is a approximation of meaning based on co-occurrence in some training corpus. And we have a video about those in the NLP for developer series if you want to learn more. So the way that a natural language processing pipeline might work is that you have the raw input is a specific token. Usually you want to use tokenization before you do any sort of featureization. And then you will apply a featureizer and then get numbers out. So in this example, our raw input is the token Apple. Uh, we're getting a fe using a featureizer that just tells us the number of letters in the word and the number of letters in the word Apple is five. Some other examples, uh, we might have a part of speech tagger that tells us the part of speech of different tokens. So Apple is a noun in this case. We could also use a featureizer to look up a pre-trained piece of information. For example, here we have uh, Apple, we have a featureizer that just looks up some specific set of embeddings that we uh, provide. Those embeddings have been pre-trained and we look up the embedding for Apple and we use that later down in our pipeline. So I mentioned that uh, featureizers are often created using machine learning. An important thing to know about a featureizer that you're using in an NLP pipeline is that it does not change during training. So it's already been trained before you start and you don't continue to retrain it usually. Uh, what does change is the machine learning model. So that way you can compare multiple machine learning models or make small changes to your model while keeping the same input because your featureizer remains the same. Also, tokenization almost always is the first step in every natural language pipeline. That allows you to break your language input down into smaller pieces that you use as the input to whatever you're using for your featureizers. One very important thing to know when picking a featureizer is the specific model that you intend to use. So most machine learning models, especially deep learning models, have specific expectations about what the input features will look like. They expect them to be a certain number of items long, a certain number of items deep. There's a very specific expectation of the shape of the input embedding. And if you are off on that shape, your model won't train. There's also different ways that you can use featureizers in a specific pipeline. So one way would be that you have different features that you're interested in and you look them up for each token and then maybe you concatenate them together as input to your machine learning model. Or you might have a pipeline where you have multiple featureizers and a featureizer at one point relies on the output of the featureizer before it. So for example, if you are trying to create parse trees uh, and create a, a syntactic model of how words relate to each other, before that, you might want to do part of speech tagging, for example, and then use the parse tree as input to your machine learning model. How are featureizers used? They're part of an NLP pipeline. Featureizer is a very broad term that includes many, many different ways of extracting information and making it machine readable. What are the benefits? It lets you do machine learning basically using modern methods. So it allows you to take a text input and convert it into a uh, numerical representation that you can use as input to a deep learning model. Uh, and if you're using a pre-trained featureizer, like a pre-trained embedding, this can save a lot of time and compute on your end. What are some drawbacks? Well, one of machine learning methods sort of in general is that any numeric feature representation of language is going to end up being a simplification um, of that language in the world. And this is very useful if you want to accomplish a specific task, but you should know that that is the case. You're losing information when you featureize. Another thing to know is that pre-trained uh, featureizers can be a little bit domain dependent. So uh, especially things like embeddings, where the word, um, let's say bank, has always been seen in the vicinity of river uh, because it's a 
data set of, I don't know, rowing terms, <laughs> you are much more likely to see river and bank being considered as similar uh, than, say, bank and check, uh, which might be more useful to you if you are using a financial uh, assistant. If that is the case, you may need to train your own featureizer or update a featureizer. So take a pre-trained featureizer and do additional training using your specific corpus. Some common gotchas and errors. The biggest one is using the wrong featureizer for the model that you're trying to use. So uh, especially in machine learning frameworks where there are multiple approaches to something and multiple different models that you can use, usually a specific model requires a specific pre-processing pipeline in front of it, and you wanna make sure you're using the right one. And the easiest way to do that is to check the docs. And the way that you're gonna know that you've messed up a little bit is you're gonna get dimension errors. So that just means my model is expecting, you know, uh, 30 by 10 matrix, and I give it a 10 by 30 matrix, um, and that's not going to work in the rest of the, uh, the model, which expects this sort of very particular shape of data. So I'm gonna have to go back and fix whatever the problem was. Some more resources, they're linked in the YouTube video description. Uh, the Raza 2.0 Featureizer documentation talks about all the Featureizers that we have in Raza so far that you might want to use on your projects. Uh, and also, one of the great things about Raza is it's open source, so you can add your own featureizers. Um, and Vincent has a custom spelling featureizer that's on the Raza GitHub, um, and you can look at that and uh, get an idea of an example of how you would build a featureizer of your own for your specific projects. I hope you found this helpful. There's a lot of discussion of features in machine learning sort of out there that's really designed for learners, uh, but featureizers is more of a term that's used in you know, developing machine learning libraries, so it's a little bit harder to figure out exactly what they are, and I hope that this video uh, helped you with that. Uh, I'll see you around, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask them on the Raza forums. Bye!